Sí. Bueno, un cordial saludo. Mi nombre es Diana Carolina Bernal Montenegro. Yo soy abogada, magíster en Derecho, con énfasis en propiedad intelectual de la Universidad Externado de Colombia. Desarrollé investigación en, eh, en excepciones al derecho de autor en favor de personas con discapacidad visual en Colombia. Entonces, aquí les presento mi índice o el marco eh, de nuestra charla, que tiene tres puntos. Y bueno, empecemos. La pregunta inicial que me dio pie para hacer investigación fue la siguiente. ¿Por qué establecer excepciones al derecho de autor en favor de personas en situación de discapacidad? Con los elementos conceptuales y el marco teórico desarrollado, llegué a la siguiente afirmación. La hambruna de libros es una situación que afecta la accesibilidad de bien en desigualdad y o discriminación hacia personas en situación de discapacidad. Desde luego, con esta afirmación es importante entender el significado de hambruna de libros como aquella insuficiencia del número de ejemplares disponibles en formatos accesibles para personas con discapacidad visual y estos, este concepto eh, está soportado por la Unión Europea. Also take into account the Convention for the Rights of People with Disability, based on which we will take into account the principle of equality and non-discrimination, and how this gives rise to that of accessibility. So, in general terms, I express that from the Convention It is important to take into account these principles of equality and non-discrimination because they are a pillar in the human rights uh, belief. It, these keywords are substantive equality and the concept of disability. The concept of disability is a concept which has evolved and is the result of the interaction between people with disabilities. The convention refers to physical, mental, intellectual, or sensory type of disabilities in the long term. We um, start interacting with a, an environment with barriers. Barriers, and because, because of them being present or not, they limit access to these rights. So there are barriers of mobility, of information, of communication, of negative attitudes towards disability and barriers also insofar as access to goods and services. In order to overcome these barriers, as the definition explains, it is important to have full participation in society with equal conditions. To that extent, and under the context of inclusion, this access is very important. And it is also very important to eliminate barriers. So by accessibility, we understand access to goods, services, and environment where these rights will be in equal conditions will be exercised. Uh, accessibility in the context of the convention is a condition prior to exercise rights, and it is also a principle. And sensibility universal. And it's all universal accessibility is based on reasonable adjustments. As universal design, we understand the universe of programs, services, goods that everyone can use to the extent possible without the need to adapt or to have some particular design. And this design is an obligation that we see specifically in the states to which they give standards or they establish standards for accessibility. They should be created with the participation of, of disabled people. What are the reasonable adjustments? They arise when there's a failure in this universal access. And then that's when you require modifications. The way they operate is once the person ha has already identified the barrier, they make the request for reasonable adjustment and that adjustment is seen in the concrete case. And it's got limitations that should not be um, with lack of proportion. Vis-a-vis -vis this burden, 
and authors like Rafael think that the argument should not be a criteria used to discard or have access to reasonable adjustment. And within this context, it is important to mention Martinez Pujante, who says that not to get to not to guarantee access generates uh, unfair treatment and non-compliance and any failure to compliance gives rise to inequity or inequality. Having said this, I want to go to the topic of scarcity of books. Let's remember this expression or term in copyrights. Let's uh, remember that it's, this is a Copyright is a human right established in the Universal Charter of Human Rights. On the one hand, it's got the relation between the author with his or her work and the relation of the work with society. And there are two legal aspects, copyrights based on common law and the continental legal traditional system, which has an exception or exceptions. So the important thing here is to highlight that insofar as the relation of the author with his work, we will find recognition of and um, heritage type of rights. They talk about the exclusivity or the exclusive nature of the work and give power to the author, authority to the author to exercise this right or right or authorize a third party to use them. This authority, when, when you find rights of users, to what extent can third parties use that work? With respect to society, the social interest is important, the social interest of the work in society. It generates stimulus to creativity, production of cultural goods, fostering foreign investment insofar as culture, generation of employment, but copyrights are not absolute. They have limits like temporary nature of the uh, heritage right, the possibility for them to be expropriated. And of course the exceptions, which are the ones who will acquire importance in this session. Let's understand by exceptions the definition of Dr. Sofia Rodriguez when she says that the use of protected work which do not require the authorization from its author which justify being free by virtue of the right extended to the people in society. And this is when we talk about the importance of this relation of copyright with the work and then with the work with society. First of all, we will recognize it because of the intellectual creation. And on the other hand, the society will benefit from the culture, the knowledge and the information. And in the context of copyright, what happens in the convention? Article 30 of the convention brings the fact that member states have, have to establish measures of access to cultural material in accessible formats. These cannot become a discriminatory barrier for the people with disabilities. So in that context, uh, let me show you a matrix where we see a connection between the copyright or the access to work with by the people with disability and the copyright of the authors. So that's when they kind of intersect, they need to flexibilize. What have we found in this flexibilization? The exceptions and the exceptions, the exceptions because in a global context, member states of the World Organization of Intellectual Property have established legislations, that is, exceptions to copyrights. In this study was conducted in 2019. In that context, there were 91 states which do not envisage any legislation on copyrights with relation to disabled people. And it is important to take into account that the, ex the existence of the Marrakesh Treaty in some, the discussions 
or in brief, the discussion they it discusses the importance of organizations like the uh, organization of intellectual property association of librarians. Since the 80s, they've been concerned about this relation and the access that the copyrights should give to books. So after many years with this treaty, it, it, it becomes easy to have access, you know, by people to work, people with disabilities or any other difficulties. They become then the international reference for copyrights as far as the standard of exception. Mas também uma troca. Nesse contexto, o direito de barreira e está reconhecido como tal em barrier. It is recognized as such in international in instruments like the convention and it is used in the con context to flexibilize or reduce these barriers. Now let's talk about the Colombian context and its relation with the pandemic. The reality for many people in situation of a disability is almost the same everywhere else. Colombia before the pandemic already had a regulatory framework. These are people who are in special education centers or special centers. And when the confinement was obligatory, it was clear to see the rights. I mean, they were ample, diverse, physical, and they had access, but they were in a restricted enclosure. They had access or they needed to have access to goods and services. Before the pandemic, we already had a regulatory framework, Law 1341 of 2009, defining the principles of information, the importance of uh, technology and information to they talked about promotion of access to opportunities and rights such as access to ticks to information and to knowledge due to the pandemic in a predominantly digital um, environment in the words of the council all these difficulties vis-a-vis -vis the topic of providing services because at least 80% of the people who are disabled in Colombia live in absolute poverty. Between 80 and 50% of them are cannot read or write. Many of them don't have access to internet. He also highlighted that 4% of the population in the country is a population with disability. This is in a incorporated in a report by NANI issued during the pandemic and it highlights that these people can be disproportionately affected due to the lack of services and support in view of the pandemic situation. I also highlight here this deficiency in the access to internet. This service, I mean, 65.4% of the population don't have access to internet service. So with this, I want to make evident that the challenges and the goals of providing these services is still a major challenge because of the marginal situation in this context information connectivity and accessibility become very important vis-a-vis uh, -vis information i want to mention how from the special rapporteur uh, on people with disabilities in at the United Nations highlights the importance of preventing and containing coronavirus. And they say that the information should be available for everyone. So vis-a-vis -vis these obligations to make available the information in sign language or in subtitles to be easily accessed and easily read, that was one of the obligations that needed to be fulfilled by, by the states. As far as TIC or technology information, there in Colombia, there is a big challenge to transform or convert into digital all these information. According to the decree, I also want to highlight the duties of the Ministry of Information Technology because they've established 
programs such as Centro de Relevo or Convertic related with access for, for people who are disabled, whether they're deaf or deaf and dumb. Now, as far as copyrights and access by disabled people in our Colombian uh, environment, we have two regulations. On the one hand, Law 1680 of 2013 is a law which is an affirmative action with guarantee to access to technologies and information created in the context to, in this context, to benefit people who have low vision or are totally blind, it reduce the barriers of the digital environment for these people. And so this law established vis-a-vis -vis the uh, technology information, uh, a measure to provide software for this type of population, this obligation uh, to have, you know, the official pages, of the state to comply with all the technical standards and vis-a-vis -vis copyrights, the description of thereof. I want to highlight that it seeks to guarantee autonomy, independence of people with low vision or blind, exercising of the rights to information and knowledge. So in this state of affairs, it is admissible to see any transformation or application of this right so that they can become accessible in a middle format or procedure. Here in the list of rights, which is very extensive, we can see how they can be made available. They can be reproduced, translated, without authorization from the authors, without having to pay, without any profit um, purposes. Etc. So we also, under law 1915 of 2018, according to this law, which modified law 23, I mean, our law on copyrights, in my opinion, is a measure which also strengthens this because it gives an exception. I mean, it exonerates the responsibility or the um, situation of restriction. So they can have access to any work. All those covered under the law can have access without any restriction in a context of limitation and exceptions in favor of disabled people. Here, the Marrakesh Treaty, the relation of Colombia with this treaty is based on the fact, well, it has not been ratified on August 15, 2019, this draft law was uh, presented, but on October 2019, this was published for a second debate. We haven't had this debate yet. And in order to conclude, these are the reflections and the conclusions of this presentation. First of all, it is important to become aware of human rights, especially uh, the convention on the part of those who can are in, involved in the debate. Uh, inequality due to lack of accessibility to goods, services, or contact has been visible, particularly by the uh, scarcity of books in situations of visual disability. However, this disability is diverse. Besides, on occasion of the accelerated entry into digital environments due to the pandemic, it is necessary for Colombia to adopt uh, quick measures to favor elimination of barriers, accessibility, and full and effective participation in society in equal conditions. And it should be, and they should use the mechanisms such as universal design, reasonable adjustments, affirmative actions, as well as exceptions to the right to the copyright. And likewise, these copyrights should stop being classified as legal barriers in the access for people in a situation of disability. Thank you very much for your attention. I remind you, my name is Diana Carolina Bernal Montenegro. If you wish to contact me, you can write to diana.bernal. 11 at est.uexternal.edu.co.